Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If y'all can rest on your feet and get with us this morning, we just want to set the atmosphere a little bit.
listen, the praise and worship team is singing so hard. Stay right there. Now, we don't worship for ourselves. We don't worship for ourselves. Now, I need you to stay right there, Jay. I need you to get out of yourself, and we're going to sing this thing corporately until it breaks. You ready? Here we go. On the count of three, we're going to sing Lord over our life. I want to hear everybody in here. Just open up your mouth even beyond the mask. Come on. Lord over my life. He's the 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 Lord over my health. Lord over my strength. Lord over my mind. Lord over my heart. Lord over my soul. Lord over my life. He's the Lord. And there we go. Wake up in here. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. And I will rejoice and be glad. Come on. In the glad people in here. Come on. Clap those hands. Come on. somebody real quickly and say he's my daddy oh y'all don't want to have no energy today because it's not mother's day but i said look at somebody i'll pull you out of it look at somebody and tell them he's my daddy he's my daddy greet your brother and sister in the name of the lord come on praise the lord greet him hallelujah hallelujah we greet you in the name of our Lord. I can't hear nobody. I think we in vacation mode. Let's wake us up a little bit. I said, I greet you in the name of our Lord. I said, I greet you in the name of our Lord. <laughs> I might need to remind some of us of who our Lord is. So let me remind you just really quickly, just in case you forgot. He's the one that healed your body. He's the one that gave you a new mind. He's the one that lifted your children out of some stuff. He's the one that brought your family through some stuff. He's the one that turns you around and he placed your feet on a solid ground. I said he's our God. I said he's our daddy. I said he's our rock. Some call him a way maker, but I call him Jesus! I said I call him Jesus! Some call him the Rose of Sharon, but I call him Jesus! He's the way out of no way!
call him Jesus. Let me tell you why I'm not priming so much today. I'm not priming because we've got to learn how to just get in it without somebody always priming us. A car doesn't start up with priming all the time. You just put the key in the ignition and it goes. And for some of us, I think our intellect and our job status has made us forget who's worthy of our praise. Now, I'm not gonna let y'all get off the hook because Mother's Day y'all praised them. And we're gonna take 30 seconds just to give God the praise on Father's Day. They asked the right person to expedite the day because I ain't scared. But I'm gonna give y'all 30 seconds to give God, your Father, a good praise. If you don't have a memory already, Let me see if this will help some of you get out of your sedity heads this morning. Now, naturally, some of us have had some dysfunctions with our biological fathers. Watch this, I'm gonna see if they catch this. But if you got a spiritual father who has prayed for you, who has labored for you, got three seconds just to give him honor this morning. Count of three. One, two, one, two, three. Without prime, we had a praise for our spiritual father, and some of y'all didn't move. But let me see if this will get you up. Can I get a praise for the father who has seen you through some stuff? Now listen, if you don't have sweet feet like Brandon and Benjamin, we can go to our brothers and sisters church and just leap.
But on the count of three, if you can't sleep, I want you to clap. You can stay seated clapping. But I want you to give your album a good 30 second praise. One, two, one, two, three, go. Just ask every father, just really quickly, just come, just come real quick. Every father, y'all overseer night, come on. And I just want y'all to give God a Father's Day present because y'all been good fathers, and I know the Lord is gonna give y'all something for your natural labor, but there's something you gotta give God for what He's done. On the count of three, every father in here, I want, I don't care what you do, leap, jump, clap. If you're Danny, you just clapping. Usher, he's clapping. On the count of three. One, two, one, two, three. Come on, men, praise him. Come on, men, praise him. Just give God a worship right there. Come on. Come on, right there. We're moving. We're moving. Come on. We're moving. Make it authentic. I don't care if you're seated or standing. Lift up those hands and just worship your God. Come on. We thank you. We thank you. We're moving. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. There it is. We've been woken up now to worship. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let that attitude go. Come on. I know they made you upset on the way here, but let it go. Come on. Worship. Worship. Come on. You better get out of your head space when God is moving. There's nothing more harmful to your daddy when you are stubborn in his presence. <laughs> There's nothing more harmful to your father when you're stubborn in his presence. Come on, worship. Five more seconds. We're moving. We're, we're ahead of time, but come on. Pull yourself out. 
to the person that reversed your sickness. Pour yourself out to the person that helped you graduate from college. Pour yourself out to the person who gave you a job that you wasn't qualified for. Come on. I don't care if you clap. I want you to pour, pour, pour. Talk to your father. Forget what you think about me. Pour. It's the presence of the Lord. Forget what you think about somebody didn't do right at your favorite breakfast spot this morning and pour yourself in here. He's too big for you to be too small. He's too big for you to be too small. And let everything that have breath praise the Lord. There it is. And we give you glory. We welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to one of the greatest churches in America. We welcome you to Bethel. <clears throat> we welcome you to Bethel Highway where the very fine pastor is overseer Brian Knight. And his lovely only leading lady, Elder Angela Knight. We greet you virtual land in the name of our Lord. And we are so grateful in a virtual space like this that you decided to join us this morning. I'm sorry that you can't be here in the building with us and when you get the opportunity, please come come and participate but there is such a glory in this place Bethel Highway would you make some noise for our online audience this morning we welcome you home we welcome you home we welcome you home we give God glory and honor because it is the day that we call Father's Day and would y'all make some crazy noise in here for every father that is present? <laughs> Woo! And, and here's the crazy thing. Uh, ladies, we love you. And ladies, we appreciate you. And ladies, we honor you for being the mother that you are. I won't do a Nikolai uh, theologian today, but I'll just say this. We, we thank you for who you are and what you are and how you are. But it is of great joy to stand here today to talk about men. Some of y'all women scare me in here today. Because if you can't clap for a man, <laughs> hello. Hello, hello, because there are so many negative images of black men. And here it is, we have black men trying. We ain't saying that they're perfect. They're trying to do the best that they can by loving God, loving their families, loving their children. And I think we have some great examples in this church. We, we, ought to, we ought to be giving God praise for that. We got great examples in this church. And, and, and hear me, I'm not trying to prime you to celebrate the men more than women. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get us to understand how to celebrate. Because we are biased people sometimes. And we celebrate who we want, when we want, and how we want. And then you're mad when people don't celebrate you. But you think they wasn't watching how you didn't celebrate them. I, I can't hear nobody in here today. And so I, I'm, I'm real big on honoring men because, and, and I need y'all to hear this, I'm an outsider coming in. And when I've been observating for the last, I don't know, Israel, four years, five years, something like that. 
I've never seen these men waver. I've seen their different personalities. Glory to his name. We went on men's retreats. I've seen personalities. But that has nothing to do with who they are fundamentally. And the reason I honor each and every one of these men is because fundamentally, they're trying their hardest. Can we open up our mouths one more time and celebrate every man? Thank you. We're moving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God glory and honor. Would y'all help me celebrate uh, Mother Locke, who is just so amazing? Did y'all see her dancing with me this morning? <laughs> Did y'all see her dancing with me? Let me tell you something. Uh, Elder Olivia said, me and Mother Locke missed you for the last two weeks while you were on assignments. I said, I'm coming back to dance with y'all. And I grabbed their hands coming in the door and gave them a five and now a little dab. And they bust out laughing because it is good to have godly women who are just so strong. And uh, Mother Locke lets me touch her hand. But I got to watch both of them because sometimes they'll try to rub the knee. Hey, hey, no, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> But would y'all help me celebrate Elder Olivia Knight as well? <laughs> I'm having fun. Hey, listen, y'all be stuck up today if you want to. I'm not. I, I came in praising God. Did you see how I came out the office? I came out. I came to give God praise. I've been in two services where the spirit was high. I know when I come to Bethel, it's time to... And so y'all pick a Sunday to be stuck up when I saw the vigils. And y'all was going ham the last two weeks. Don't get cute this week now. Go ham again so I can get some. Would y'all help me celebrate that in the woman of God of Elder Kia Graham, who is so amazing. And I bet y'all think I'm going to mess up, but I won't. Would y'all help me celebrate Elder Mickens? Y'all thought I was going to mess up. And would you help me celebrate that in the person of Minister Bussey as well? Oh, y'all thought, see, I, I can dance off of that, right? Uh, and would you help me celebrate all of our ministers, Minister Norman, both of them, every deacon, every trustee, every man of God, woman of God, Every lottie daddy and everybody. Does that cover everybody? We good now. Y'all seem woke now. Maybe when Bishop comes, he'll make you step into it the most. Y'all seem woke. I'm here to prime because y'all y'all sleeping this morning. And so we give God glory and praise for everyone in that manner. Would y'all do me a favor and would you help me celebrate? Come on. Would you help me celebrate Jesus? Now that's crazy. Now that's crazy. I'm, I'm gonna ask you one more time. Would you help me celebrate a man that came from Galilee by the name of Jesus? Would you open up your mouth and celebrate him this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah, okay. <laughs> Watch yourself, Justin, because I'll praise him by myself this morning. You hear me? Just watch yourself. Relax, Justin. I'll praise him by myself. Let, let me tell you, let me tell you why I feel like this this morning. For many of you don't know, this is, hold up. <laughs>
to go, but, but just do me a favor. Grab somebody by the hand. Grab somebody by the hand and just tell them, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus did it for me. Jesus saved my soul. Jesus made me whole. Jesus did it. Who did it? Jesus did it. I gave y'all 30 seconds early on. Now y'all got to Come on, we got to go. We got to go. Woo! We got to go. We do. We do. Over CSA, we got to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be seated if you can. Be seated if you can. Come on. I'm trying to move. Be seated if you can. Highway Church of Christ, a church committed to embracing you with the love of Jesus Christ. These are your upcoming announcements. We are so excited about our youth conference 2022 entitled Outpour. Registration for adults is $40 and for children it's $20. June the 24th, the 25th, and the 26th. Ladies, if you have not registered, for the time of refreshing woman's retreat, please do as soon as possible, August the 19th to August the 21st. For more information, please speak to our Lady Angela Knight, and registration is only $35. Please join us in our new men's initiative entitled The Road to 100 Men Campaign. 100 Men Connected, 100 Men in Fellowship, 
a hundred men in worship, a hundred men in prayer, a hundred men shifting culture. It'll be Saturday, November the 26th at 11 a.m. There is more information to come, but please speak to our overseer Brian Knight or our deacon Andre Wilkins for more information. On Sunday, July the 17th at 10 a.m. here at Bethel Highway Church of Christ, we'll be having our mommy and daughter twin Sunday. For more information, please speak to our first lady, Angela Knight. On July the 9th, our overseer Brian Knight will be preaching at Starlight Holiness Church for their pastoral anniversary honoring Pastor Karen Boykins. More information will be sent soon. Tomorrow at 8 p.m. via Facebook, our overseer Brian Knight will be part of a panel discussion entitled Conversations That Matter. The host will be Pastor Andre Cartwright. It'll be a post Father's Day edition with the subtopic of Father's Love. On Tuesday, June 21st at 7.30 p.m., we'll be having another Man Cave Men's Fellowship. Our host will be Deacon Andre Wilkins, and our guest speaker will be Elder Timothy Wortham. The topic will be on Daddy Issues. If you are a new guest to the ministry, we welcome you. And we ask that you see our sister Shanika Knight for more information. Please like, share, comment, and tag a friend or family member that you would love to experience and come fellowship with us, whether in person or online. We thank you in advance. These have been your announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Praise the Lord. I'll make this real quick. How's everybody doing? God is good. Happy Father's Day. All right, two things. We are, uh, excuse my shirts, uh, I'm new gen saved. Hallelujah. We are excited about next weekend. We have an amazing lineup. Elder Jamal Brantley, he's going to preach us crazy on Friday night, 7.30. Come on, put them hands together. Saturday all the way from Houston, Texas, Pastor Shalandria Taylor is going to preach us under the anointing and these floors. Come on, put those hands together. And then on Sunday morning, say Sunday morning, we got Prophet Brandon Blackson. We got Lady Warrior Zabria Knight. We've got Youth Pastor Kevin Johnson. And we got Minister Monique Nolan. We have an amazing lineup next week. And then once the four demon slayers cast the devil out, prophesy and preach the word, we gonna have hot dogs with a little chocolate on it, as Nyla say, and hamburgers. And our sister Deborah is making her amazing salads. And we're gonna have water ice and pretzels. I need everyone look at your neighbor even if they don't speak english say neighbor have you registered that neighbor didn't sound too secure look at the other neighbor say neighbor have you registered if you have not registered i i like that don't do that i need you to take twenty dollars and put another twenty dollars if you didn't pre-register and put them together make 40 go to brush fire go to brush fire i said go to brush fire type in your name address and email and then hit register and you will be registered and you will see a registration team out there and they're going to give you lord jesus a bag a bracelet a water bottle and a t-shirt and what makes it so special this year is that God is doing something different that he promised us in Joel he says I'm pouring out come on this is an Anglican church I know I ain't preaching I said God is pouring out all next weekend come on get excited get excited get excited he's pouring out 2022 amen all right it's Father's Day.
Father's Day weekend, we have, Lord, she, whew, we have an amazing pastor, father, leader, icon. I mean, I'm seeing flyers where Anglo-Saxons, he's crossing boundaries and lines and denominations. This man is awesome. Can we stand up and honor our spiritual father, our leader, our shepherd, overseer Brian Keith Knight? This man is worthy of double honor, and we love him so. We have a card for him, and it's a beautiful card. We know you love cards. It's around here somewhere. Somebody got the card. Amen. And from the church, we have a small token for you. Don't put it back in the offering. Go get you, you know, put it towards some coochies or Louis or something. You know, that's what you want now. Don't get no red bottoms, though, huh? But something that you like. Please celebrate your fathers this afternoon and pray for your spiritual father who's been an amazing leader to us. Pray my strength in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. I want to say happy Father's Day to every father in the building. I applaud you. I'm proud of you. I brag on you. I'm humbled by being in your presence. Happy Father's Day to every, every, every father in here. Love you. And expectations are really high, and you're meeting every one of them. And I thank God for that. Well, I'm here to give a presentation to the father of my children. I had the um, I had the uh, awesome experience to visit the King Center and the King Museum. You can give it to him because I want him to open it. And um, when I was shopping, doing what I do best, I was shopping and I saw this word. And when I saw the word, I pulled it out and I I read it. And I said, "This is my husband right here." Like every single word of it, I said, "I got to do something with this." And I said, I'm going to present it to him because it, it speaks volumes and it's him all over it. So I want him to look at it and read it. And I said, this is going in his office. So every time he walks in and he have a low moment, he can look at that and be like, she thought about me. When, when. I want him to be reminded of what he's thought about and what we think of him as a whole. I thought about this and I said integrity, he bleeds integrity. He bleeds it, he bleeds it, he bleeds integrity. And, and the bottom of it says, when, when your character is built on spiritual and moral foundation, your contagious way of life will influence millions. That's what it says. So we thank God. The only thing that'll make this better is if this was him in here and said, you know, we like Dr. Martin Luther King. No, he's a great man, right? Yeah, but this is a great man too. So before, hopefully by October, I'm putting this out there to my sons. Hopefully by October, we can get another one. And his picture will be right here with everything else around it. We applaud you, man of God. We thank God for what a, father, what a great father you are. What a great, great father you are. We thank God for you. to God with the voice of triumph. Um, we bless the Lord. Amen. We're going to move on uh, in this portion of the service. Um, but 
we want to wish every father happy Father's Day. Amen. I, I'll say that later. This. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So I'll, I'll say what I was going to say later because it's going to be that way the word of God can come. Amen. And so we just are grateful. Um, I'm not going to start nothing today. I got to look at Chelsea. I ain't going to start nothing today uh, because Pastor, listen, somebody say, you ain't fooling nobody. Pastor Dwayne is trying to get the Expediter Award. <laughs> I'm having fun with him, but we, we thank the Lord for everybody and we're about to receive our tithe and our offering uh, for this morning. Amen. How many know uh, that it is a blessing to give in God's house? Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Don't get sad. Amen. Uh, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And I'm not uh, saying stuff out of cliches. Amen. But it's good to give in God's house. And we get the opportunity to give. And one thing about this house, I cannot speak for other houses, but one thing I can say about this house is that when you do give, amen, you're able to see what your giving does. Amen. You don't have to go around. I know there are rumors um, that people talk about church folk and, and pastors and leaders. Oh, they giving all their money. Let me clear it to you. Everybody ain't giving all their money in church. Let me clear it up real quick. That, that, as a matter of fact, that was 20-something years ago when that was happening. That ain't happening today. Amen. But if you give out of a free heart, amen, the Lord will bless you. Amen. And please tell me your heart cannot just be George Washington. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because George can't take care of too much now. When I was a kid, they had penny candy. And we took a dollar. And we got 100 pieces of candy. And we had to split it between four and five people. Amen. So it's time to give God a raise. I say, give God a raise. Amen. So you can't, you can't, you can't even buy penny candy with a dollar no more. They want, they, they want more than that. Amen. And so we come to bless the Lord in our giving. I want everybody to repeat that with your offering and your hand into our online audience. We are our guests. We praise you to our guests. We thank you for coming. But with your offering in your hand, on your right hand, whether it's your device or your actual offering, repeat after me, but this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. God bless you. Lord, your mighty, 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 Lord, your mighty,
to share the word is about to come would you do us a favor if you have a phone in this sanctuary or right where you are in virtual land we want you to share this service to your social media sites why because sharing is caring and if you care about someone's soul we want you to share this broadcast the next voice that you are about to hear in this moment is none other than the lead pastor the senior pastor of this church bethel highway would you do us a favor? If you're in virtual land, throw up some hearts. But if you're in this sanctuary, would you give some reverence to our leader, overseer, Brian Knight? I'm gonna sing one portion of this song, and then I'm then I'm gonna um, say something. Um, but before I sing, I'm gonna say this: um, There's a TikTok. that I like, um, and I I don't like all of them. But there's one I like, and it just, it gives me, it, it makes me laugh. Because uh, most men, it, it's, it's a woman talking to a man. And uh, most men, when, they, when, the, when, when the woman talk to the man, the man looking like. But when I see it, I see it like God talking to us. That's just how I see it. So I'm, I'm going to tell you what the TikTok says. And I want you to repeat it. I'm going to give you what to repeat. But this, you know, ain't that okay? Now, I want you to just do it to your neighbor, though. We, we, you know, so I want you to look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is what God says. Either you're going to be with me or I'm going to be with you or we're going to be together. And I'm giving you options. Let's say it one more time. Say, neighbor, God says, either you're going to be with me or I'm going to be with you or we're going to be together. The Bible says, I'll never leave you. He said, I'll never forsake you. I'll be right by your side. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, God ain't crazy. Amen. But he said, either you're going to be with me or going to be with you. Amen. He said, we're going to be together. Amen. So we praise the Lord. 
Amen. Some folks. Would rather have houses. I gotta, I'm sound like my aunt right now. Let me put myself down. Or lands. Some folks. I know you can't find my key, can you? They choose silver or gold. But these things they treasure and forget about their soul. I decided to make Jesus my choice. Whoa. The going gets tough And the hills are hard to climb But I started out I started out A long time ago A long time ago And there is no doubt and There is no doubt In my mind In my mind I decided Listen, y'all. I love praise and worship. I love the, the CCM. But what I just saw, that's my foundation. That's the thing that holds me. When trouble, because they didn't tell me things was going to be easy. They showed me how difficult it was going to be. But they say, I decided to make Jesus my choice. My choice. One more time, you know the road is rough. Oh, you know the road is rough. And the going gets tough. The going gets tough. And the hills, and the hills are hard to climb. Oh, but I started out, I started out a long time ago. A long time ago. And there is no doubt. There is no doubt in my mind. In my mind. But I decided, I decided to make Jesus my soul. Praise him. Come on, clap your hands and praise him. Come on, clap your hands and praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I've decided to make Jesus my choice. It has been the best decision of my life. Amen. I have not been moved by stuff. Stuff, issues and hardships and tribulations and a whole lot of things came to encourage me to throw in the towel. But the peace I have inside of him. Ooh, that, that's why there's no doubt in my mind. Because when doubt do come, he'll speak to me. He'll say, Brian, I'm right here. Amen. So I praise him. Listen, today is Father's Day. And y'all know I like to do something different on, on Father's Day. And I like to hear from the young fathers. Or the older fathers. You know, all of them ain't, you know, 
I think I got them all age-wise. Well, I got them all in all categories. Amen. But today we're going to hear from three fathers. Amen. Now, I've given them all just 10 minutes. If I say 10 minutes. So when you get up here, don't give honor to me. Don't say I thank God for Pastor Nine and, and, and to those, well, we see something for a minute. To those who are married, don't give honor to your wife. I know she's sitting there looking like, no, no, don't honor her today. No, no, honor her today later. <laughs> because you got 10 minutes and you got somebody to come behind you. Amen. And I'm going to tell you who they are. Y'all going to go off. Y'all going to go off. Amen. So our first speaker. <laughs> uh, listen. I want to get up. Okay, we're going to go in this order. Our first speaker would be Remember if I say 10 minutes, it can be done. And Angie went, we went to a conference for Angie in Atlanta. And this was doctors and all type of stuff. And they, they had to present in 10 minutes with some of their cases. And they did it. So we can do this, right, y'all? So our first speaker is going to be None other than my very own cousin, Brother Eric Harrison. Hold on. He's first. After, because Eric used to a little bit doing this. You know, he had a little chance last weekend. So we're going to make him set the tone for us. And after him, we're going to have another young brother who is now, we're going to have to pull him in. I'm going to tell you that now. <laughs> we get to pull him in because he can talk. Amen. And that's our brother, Daniel Mosley. <laughs> Amen. And somebody said, you got to have a closer. And we have a great closer today. One that has been knowing the word all his life, even if he ain't live it all his life. None other than our brother Justin Cardwell. Amen. <laughs> so, somebody say, we in for a treat today. Amen. So please, let's make sure they have, let's exchange these mics so they can, everybody can have the right stuff. And, and listen, what I need them to do is this. All those who are speaking, look at that clock up there. Right in your back. It's going to say 10 o'clock. Amen. It says 10. That means it's going to keep, keep going down. And once it hits zero and you still talking, I want the whole church to stand up. <laughs> Amen. So let's receive none other than Brother Eric Harrison at this time. Amen. So I'm gonna make this quick. Um, my message might be a little bit controversial. All right, um, I'm a I'm known for a person. Of, I'm I'm known as a spontaneous person. So just have an open mind. So start off. Uh, Proverbs 22, verse six. Train up a child in a way he should go, and he is old. He will not depart from it. At times, it's hard to be a parent. This message is not to discourage those who are not parents 
or those who are pending awaiting God's answer and to answer to their prayers. <clears throat> God gives us what we need, not what we ultimately request. We are intimate, I'm sorry, we are intimate with no intentions of thinking about offspring. As adults, you know what that means. <clears throat> but we do it because we are in the moment of lust or in the least cases, love. Close to nine months later, we must come to that fork in the road to make two decisions. The path to the left displays a sign in which it says, life of selfishness. And the path to the right also displays a sign, but it says, life of sacrifice. Dads tend to do things without praise and being unnoticed. We want to show the world that we can take on any challenges, not challenge, challenges, in which we approach on our roads of life. However, we can all agree that it never goes to plan or sometimes even close to it. Today we celebrate all fathers and dads, but I want to pause there. I might be the only person on this planet, I got seven minutes and 49, 46 seconds, I might be the only man and father on this planet who actually says that I don't agree with the term or the, the name Father's Day. And the reason why is because there's two words when it comes to a man who is a parent, or titles, I must say, father and dad. If you don't know the difference, in Webster's Dictionary, well, Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, it says, father is the inventor of. Dad, dad is really a man, and I'm saying that I'm being strict on that, a man who takes responsibility of his children. Children. Now, we don't say, oh, we go up to our parent, our male parent, and say, oh, hello, father. No. We say, hello, dad. And we're very, very, like, we're very, very strict on that. <laughs> Let me go back to my word. <clears throat> now, back in the day, I was wild. It's a little joke, so just, like I said, be open-minded. <laughs> I, I may be a father in some other countries. I might not know. <laughs> but I have not received that knock on my door as of yet. <laughs> or that phone call. <laughs> Please, God. <laughs> father of two. Two. <laughs> I ain't received no long-distance calls yet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, though. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, all right. So a dad is a parent, one who has, to, who has felt the sadness behind the tears of a child, one who has taken those late-night walks or rides to the ER and pharmacy thereafter. A dad makes mistakes, owns up to them, correct and improve upon them because behind a dad is not meant to be stuck in childish ways but to learn more about your new self. When you transition from a man into a dad, or a father if you choose to be that, you have to ultimately say to yourself, well, you know what? Am I this new person or am I the old person who no longer had, who, who, who never had a child? Once you step into that realm of parenting and fatherhood slash dadhood, you realize that, hey, you know what? I no longer can do and be around those old people who I was around. Oh. So now you have to step up and say, you know what? I'm going to be a positive role model for this young person. Not for those the role model or that role dog who you used to be with, or role dogs who you used to be with. We want all, we want all for, well, I'm sorry, we all want for our children to be safe and raised properly, but if you sit back and reflect on the past 120 hours, that's five days. So if you reflect back all the way towards Wednesday from today, 
or Tuesday. Yeah, what, Tuesday. Sorry, Wednesday. <laughs> if you reflect back, can you honestly say that I actually was able to properly raise my child in a safe environment? I want you guys to ask yourself, dads, definitely, ask yourself that question. Did you not spaz out in front of your child, in front of your significant other? Did you not say things that was demeaning or that was controversial to a child's ears? Did you not say that? So you have to really actually think about that. Do I properly raise my child? Do I raise my child in a safe, a safe household and or environment? And if you say you do, you're not a father or you're not a dad. Because quite frankly, when you're dishonest to yourself first, that, displo that displays specified characteristics of yourself. And you have to really ask yourself, well, you know what? Am I really a dad? You can live up to that expectation because dad is really a perfection, a word, as a, a word for a, perfect, a, perf a perfect male father, male parent, I'm gonna just say. Get back to my word. <coughs> Can you honestly say I've accomplished that in which I want it for my child? If you can be honest with yourself, as I said, and have done that, sorry you're not a dad. God granted his creation with free will. We do not realize that until we actually become parents or until we actually become adults. So, <clears throat> realizing this, the minute you say no to a child for a toy, something minor, a pack of Skittles or something like that, you gotta realize you're actually, you might be creating a generational curse. Because those little small things that we look at, oh, you know what, that's small, you don't need it right now. That kid may look at it as a very big thing. And that might affect your parenting in the near future. I'm not saying say yes to everything. However, just reflect upon the certain decisions that you make and that you say to your child. One minute and 53 seconds. <laughs> fathers, step up. Well, my last message is, is, is to the fathers. Fathers, I'm asking you to step up. Single mothers, allow that man to step in and step up. <clears throat> One minute and 30 seconds. <clears throat> Ladies who do not have children as of yet, this is a big message to you. Make sure that man is the right one before you give that man full access to your queendom. <laughs> one minute. <laughs> Taking this up, taking this up. <laughs> Trust me, ladies. I was the right, wrong one <laughs> seven different times. <laughs> not saying, not saying five different kids, five additional kids, but just I was the right, wrong one multiple times. Men, for you, <laughs> thirty seconds. All right, men. For you men who do not have children yet, make sure that woman is the right one before you give her access to your kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ten seconds. With that said, I wish the men happy, happy Father's Day, or I would like to say, three seconds left. Happy Dad's Day. Grace and peace, y'all. Grace and peace, man. Happy Father's Day to all the real fathers. But, uh, you know,
being a father to me is uh, it's real important because I didn't really, well, I can't say I didn't have a father growing up because God was always there for me. And now as a man, I understand that as a child, I kind of always felt rebellious thinking that, you know, I was never loved by a man. But now I'm being older, I realize God was there the whole time. So I can't say that no more. But uh, being a father for me has been fun my whole life. Uh, I'm going to tell you all a funny story because when my first son was born, I was 18. And, uh, you know, when a kid is born, you, the doctors have their own protocol. But my family was in the waiting room. And I took my son right out. <laughs> I said, I'm taking this boy to go see my mom. <laughs> the doctor's like, no, you can't do that. I'm like, yeah, all right, I'm out of here. I ran out with my baby, took him straight to the delivery room, to the uh, waiting room. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, but. Being a father is a great thing, man. It, it is, it's taught me so much over time. You know, my, my, my oldest is 13. I have, I have three kids, but I fathered so many kids. So many kids. I'm not even going to lie. Cousins, nieces, nephews. I fathered so many children. And I just think it's important to, you know, be a positive role model for these young black men. Because we come from a place where we don't really get to see a lot of role models where we from. So, you know, I just think it's great to, you know, be a role model because I'm, I'm definitely a role model. And I, I, I can say things like that now because I'm older. Like, bro, I probably couldn't say it a few years ago, but now I know, like, you know, I've grown to be a good man. Not just a good father, a good son, a good husband, a good, a, I'm, 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 I'm in my walk right now with Christ. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm striving to be the best I could be for God. You know, and I, I, know, I know Pastor Knight told us to not give him no, no, no sauce up here, but I just want to thank this great man right here because, you know, he, he hasn't been in my life too long, but he's made such a crazy impact on my life. Like, him and Lady Knight, you know, like, me and my wife all the time, we go through little things where, <laughs> where you know, Pastor the night is my shield, and Lady Night is her shield. So I just thank them so much for, for you know, because they're role models to us. They're teaching us about our future, because I, I know we have a future in this life. You know, my whole life has, has, has been, you know, a, a series of events where God has been showing me that he's building me for something bigger, something bigger than myself, something bigger than my career, something bigger than making money, you know. I know God is building me for something. So, you know, when he, when he brought Pastor Knight to me, over time I just realized, you know, hold on, I got, I got to listen to this guy. I got to take direction from him because, you know, when God, you can lose not listening to somebody like that. You can lose. And I, I don't want to lose what God has sent him into my life for. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just grateful to have you in my life because I, I know that, you know, you, 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 you growing me into a better person. Just a better everything. And, you know, I, I don't really need 10 minutes, but I'm just, I'm just, you know, proud, proud to be a Bethel Highway member, you know, since, since day one. I got all my bros. <laughs> you know, and it's just, it's just a blessing to be part of a situation like this, you know, coming from where I come from, you know. So I just want to tell everybody, thank y'all, you know, and I appreciate y'all. And I watch out for my pastor, man. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. 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 All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right, so when Pastor first asked me, I was like, yeah, cool, no problem. You know what I mean? I'll do this. Then, like a week later, whatever, I'm like, Pastor, I don't think I could do this. You're going to have to get somebody else. Like, 
<laughs> he was like, he was like, nah, you gotta do it. It's only ten minutes. You know, if Danny could do it and uh, Eric could do it, you could do it. So I'm like, all right, I got you. So I'm like questioning myself, like, what am I gonna say? Like, I've never stood in front of people. I've never spoken before. I've never done nothing like this. So I'm like, what am I gonna say to the father? What can I say to a father? You know what I'm saying? Um, because I got so many great examples that's older than me, so many people that have been doing it, so many people that I look up to. So I'm like, what can I possibly say? Um, but I just want to give you something that I believe God, you know, gave to me. All right? So I'm going to just read a quick scripture, Genesis 1, all right, chapter 1, verse 26 through 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. All right. And I just want to talk to the brothers for a little bit about what God's definition of a man is, what God's definition of a father is. Um, when you think about, you know, fatherhood, you think about somebody strong, somebody powerful. You know, you think about a seed bearer, you know what I mean? Um, you think about the life giver, you know? You think about, you know, a protector, you know what I mean? You think about all these things when you think about a man, you know, when you think about a father. But a lot of times I know in life, we base our examples off of what a father is based off of what we experience. So sometimes, you know, God has given all of us, you know, vessels, you know, to bring us here. He, we all have different experience with, with our father. You know, some of our fathers was horrible fathers. Some of them wasn't in the picture at all. You know what I mean? Some of them was there, but you had no relationship with them. You know what I mean? They came home every night, but you had no relationship. You didn't know who they were. You know, some of them was hard on you. Some of them was stern on you. And so based off of that, we base our opinion of what a father is based off of the example that we typically have, you know? But I just want to quickly, briefly say to the brothers that God said that you are the head of your household. You are the leader of your household. You are the rock of your household. God said that you are the seed bearer. God said that you are the legacy. You know what I mean? God said that everything that he implanted in you as a father, he wants you to implant that into your kids. You know, and I look, I look at, <laughs> I look at, I look at the example that I had at, uh, 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 from my father. You know what I mean? My father, when I grew up, I thought he was hard. Him and my mom, I thought they was hard on me. I really did. I thought like they didn't allow me to do anything. They didn't allow me to go nowhere. None of that. So once I got the opportunity to, I went buck. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, ew. Like I'm out here. You know what I'm saying? So I started doing things that nobody else would do. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't never had an experience. You know what I mean? But as I get older and as I more and more mature, you know, and now I got a teenager, I realized the things that he was saying. I realized, you know, how true you know, everything that he implanted in me was, you know what I mean? And a lot of it, you know, is, is, is based off of, you know, his relationship with God, because he didn't have an example, you know what I'm saying? He didn't have an example of what a father was, how to, you know, be a father, but he was able to lead me, and now I'm able to do the same thing, and that's his legacy living through me, you know what I mean? It's God's legacy living through him that now I can carry on the legacy of God, our father. So now my kids can see this is what a man is supposed to be. This is what a father is supposed to be. This is how a father is supposed to operate. This is how a father raised his family. This is how it happens by me being the example. Um, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll give a quick testimony and then, you know, and then I'm out. Uh, so when I had my first son, um, I was like, I wasn't really there, you know what I mean? I still was in the streets, you know what I mean? I was smoking, drinking, you know what I mean? Getting high, doing all types of crazy stuff, you know what I'm saying? Little skinny little, little boy just running around Philly, you know what I mean? 28th Montgomery, just doing anything, seriously. Mm -hmm. Anything I could get my hands on, I was just doing it, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so I wasn't really, you know, ready to be a father, you know what I mean? And so when I had my son, I'm looking, I'm like, man, this ain't me. <laughs> nah, that ain't me. Nah, he don't look nothing like me at all. Nah, I'm cool. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? So 
my mom is like, my mom, my mom is chewing my back out. My mom chewing my back out, right? My dad really ain't say that. My dad was just cool, just chilling. He ain't really say too much. But my mom was chewing my back out, and me and her relationship started really being affected by, you know, her coming at my neck. And I'm like, yo, it ain't my young boy. Like, chill. You know what I'm saying? So she wound up, uh, we wound up, you know, going through the procedures to make sure it really was. So it really was. And she said something to me that I'll never forget. Um, she said to me, she said, you don't have an excuse. She said, you know what a great father is. You have no excuse not to do what you're supposed to do for your son. You know what I'm saying? And that moment, along with other moments, but that was one of the key moments that began to change my life, you know, and begin to change the way I think about things, you know what I mean, when it comes to being a father, because I had that, you know what I mean? I give more kudos to the guys that didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? Guys that didn't have no example. You know what I mean? A lot of you fellas in this room didn't have a true example of what a father is. You know what I'm saying? But you stepping up to the plate. Every man in this house is stepping up to the plate. You know what I'm saying? And I thank God for y'all. You know, and you're going to be blessed for that. You know what I'm saying? Your seed is going to be blessed. Be your seed, the nations will be blessed. You know what I'm saying? Because of y'all and what y'all doing. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I truly believe that there is something special in this house when it comes to men. You know what I mean? There really is. You know what I'm saying? I tell my wife all the time, y'all ladies chat ain't got nothing on the guys chat. I'm telling y'all, y'all don't. They don't got nothing on us. They don't, like, they don't. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't have nothing on us, you know what I mean? Yo, so, look, I ain't gonna hate, I ain't gonna hate right now because I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of looks, you know what I mean? So I, <laughs> it's what it is, all right, it's what it is. You know what I mean? But look, like, seriously, man, like, like what's in this house, you know, it's special, man. It really is, it's really something special in this house. And I would just like to say, you know, to all the young men that's aspiring to be dads, all the young men that's aspiring <laughs> to be fathers, you know what I mean? You have some great examples. You know, starting from the top, man, starting from the very top, going all the way down. You know what I'm saying? You got some great examples. One of the things in this in this church that really, 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 really helped me, and, and just just like it just blessed me a lot. Um, we had this youth thing in here. I, I think it was a youth thing, right? I think it was. I think it was a youth thing, whatever. But all Nell kids was over there on the side, Nell praying. You know what I'm saying? They all was all of them. All 20 of them, they was over there. <laughs> <Nilt down. laughs> they, was over, they was over there. They was over there knelt down praying. You know what I'm saying? And I said to myself, I said to myself, I said, I said, first I said this. First I said, yo, as rough as his boys is, you know what I'm saying? It takes some humility, you know what I mean? For a boy, even that small, to, 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 to humble himself, to kneel. You know what I'm saying? There has to be some type of example. There has to be some type of example. So he's doing something that they see, something that they want to admire. And I'm just using him as an example, but he's doing something that they want to see. So all the young men in this church, all the young men, if you're aspiring, even if you're not young, if you're aspiring you know, to, to be a father, if you thinking about proposing to your girl, um, and you, uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't know why I keep looking this way, my bad. But uh, look, if you're thinking about proposing or whatever, and, 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 and if you're thinking about having kids after you get married, you know what I mean? If you're thinking about having kids and all of that, you got some great examples in this house, starting from the head down. You got some great examples. So I'm done, that's it. Hallelujah. Amen. Wasn't that wonderful, y'all? Amen. Amen. Listen, I tell you, amen. Thank God for Father's Daddy Day. Amen. You got a whole lot of fathers, but not a whole lot of daddies. Amen. And we thank God for uh, God letting us know that he's there all the time. Amen. But look what the, he, well, like what Justin said, look to your neighbor and say, you got no excuse. You hear what I said? You got no excuse. Amen, because we got a heavenly father. Come on, y'all. Amen. You may not have the, the earthly one here, but we got a heavenly father. Amen. That has been there and that is right there with us. And so we praise the Lord for each of them coming in their own way. Amen. Each of them coming in their own way. Amen. And so we thank the Lord for that. Um, where he at? Can you get that for me, Jonathan? 
Get that for me, please. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, we're not going, I'm not going to do what I normally do when somebody preach, ask y'all to come sow a seed. Amen. I'm, I'm going to give them all something. Amen. For speaking to us today. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. Now, I praise the Lord. You got it? Yeah, I praise the Lord because, um, I praise the Lord because um, I grew up with a father. Amen. And my father is and was a great man. Amen. Um, as children, we felt that he was too hard. We, we, I mean, my, my father was, yeah, we, we felt he was too hard. Um, y'all shift me a little bit. We had to, y'all got it. You know, we couldn't, you know how it's the summertime now? We couldn't stay in bed all day. This stuff that these people are doing today. My father didn't care whether it was a, a non-school day. You was out to bed by 10. You wasn't sleep, sleeping in his house all day long like you tired. You had to work. And he gave you a job to make the money, amen? So he taught us discipline. He taught us how to save money, amen? He taught us how not to go nowhere without money. You know, you go on a trip. You, you want to hang out and go on a trip? You know, you, some folk will go away and don't have a dime. The Gizzy was like, don't you try that. Don't you embarrass me. You better have money to get back. Have something to eat. Amen. And I was just telling somebody the other day, sometimes you don't even realize what fathers do. Remember when I was in college, I, I was in Reading, PA for two years, and we would come home. And at that time, it made, it's nothing now, y'all, but... You know, driving for an hour and five, ten minutes was something big back when I was going to college. And my father would pick me up. At that time, we had the station wagon. Y'all know what a station wagon is, y'all. <laughs> we had a station wagon. And my father would, now this is the funny part, um, my mom didn't go. Great mom. But my father would take some of my peers that was in college with me and he would take us back to school. Stop us past McDonald's. Get us all something to eat. Take us to the campus. Slip me $20, $25 and go back home. As a child, I didn't know, y'all look at me, don't worry about back there. As a child, I didn't know the significance of what that meant. But when I look back over my life, and I see that there was always a man that was trying to make something happen. Amen? Amen? that was consistent in the life, amen? That's what's important. And so we praise the Lord for fathers. Amen today. If I say fathers. fathers. 